There is a mutant in Marvel Comics that nobody remembers, and this guy's name is Forget Me Not. So, this story opens up basically at the Jean Grey School for Higher Learning, where there is a girl who is stuck in a Shi'ar force field, the Shi'ar basically being an alien race, right? Technology the X-Men use sometimes. And because of the nature of this shield, the more a person wants to get in and is not supposed to be there, the more the shield will suck you in and actually digest you, right? It'll destroy you. And so forget me not, appears out of nowhere. Just totally takes this girl by surprise, right? And she's like, who in the world are you? And he's like, uh, I'm an X-Man, an X-Men, whatever. It doesn't really matter what you call it. But basically, I'm a member of the X-Men team, right? And this girl does not believe this guy at all because she knows everything there is to know about the X-Men and there's no record of this guy having ever existed. And that's when he explains. He says, I have the uncanny mutant power of instantly sliding out of people's attentions and their memories whenever they look away. And he says, as a matter of fact, it takes an incredible effort just to get you to notice me right now, which is to say, keeping her attention the entire time. And so even then, like when she looks away because her arm is being dragged in, she looks back and she doesn't know who this guy is. So like immediately you could tell exactly how his power works. Now, the cool thing is he kind of offers this explanation as a sort of distraction because in order to ensure this girl survives, the goal is to get her mind off of the idea that she wants to get into the Xavier, or I'm sorry, the Jean Grey School of Higher Learning. And so he starts to tell her his story basically, like how his powers work, the different escapades and adventures that he's been on. And the cool thing is it all basically picks up with the Age of X. Now, for those of you guys who don't know about Age of X, we have covered that story. It's an amazing story. But in effect, Legion had basically altered reality, right? The mutant with a million personalities, each one with its own power. These powers vary in what they're capable of. Sometimes it's just being able to control fire. Sometimes it's time travel. Sometimes it's just outright reality warping on a massive scale. And that's literally what happened with Age of X. It was just this massive alteration to reality itself where it was a constant war taking place between what were basically humans and mutants and it was never ending. And the way this works out, right? This is one of the coolest things about it. For Forget Me Not, this guy had always struggled with his power. He says, the same power that makes people forget me messes with visual perception, aim, every weapon's telemetry. So literally people fire at him, but they always miss. And he says, maybe nobody noticed me, but hell, you could see where I'd been. And if I fell in battle, she'd be there to catch me. Legacy, the living memorial of all the mutant fallen, the vault where all our memories would be preserved. Now, one of the things to know is that in Age of X, because of the nature of the story and the nature of reality warping, traditional X-Men roles weren't really what they'd been. So in the case of Rogue, for example, instead of her just being like an X-Man that would travel around and, you know, Gambit was always chasing after her, trying to clap the cheeks, that instead, Instead, it was one of these things where whenever an X-Man died, she would touch them and their memory would live on in her, right? The issue with Forget Me Not is that he was always hunting to like die in battle, but people always missed him so he could just never actually die. He is, by all standards of measurement, immortal, if we're being honest, aside from the fact that he could presumably age. Not enough is known about him to know whether or not he could, but the result here is that he would never actually become one with Legacy. And in fact, there is a point where he's seemingly injured, or at least that seems to be the case, and basically because nobody's looking at him, they all just pass him by because they don't know that he's there. So he ends up waking up on this battlefield with like this guy who's injured. And of course, this guy's like freaking out because he's just kind of like, you know, oh my God, you're a mutant and you're gonna kill me, all that kind of stuff. Here's where the cool thing comes into play, that what ends up happening is the two of them have a conversation once Forget Me Not basically earns this guy's trust, right? He injects it with antibiotics because his injury is basically infected and so on and so forth. And this guy realizes that he's not really there to kill him. But what this guy does is he starts to say things like, I don't think I'm gonna last until morning, right? Like, will you stay with me? And the response of Forget Me Not is like, dude, it's just your leg, man. Like, I mean, it, as long as we have it bandaged up and you got some antibiotics, you're gonna survive, you're gonna be fine right I mean sure like you used to be an adventurer like us but then ultimately you took a bullet to the knee and that's no longer the case but this guy says no it's not right it's everything 
I don't even remember my own name anymore. It's written on my dog tags, but it doesn't mean anything. And the response of like, forgive me, I was like, well, that's just the fever talking, right? But this guy's like Calhoun, Daniel Calhoun. That's my name. And he says, say it back to me. And then like, forget me nots, like, I mean, I wasn't really listening, right? And like, he can't remember it, right? And like, that's where this guy says, like, you see what I'm saying? Like, it's just sounds. It has no meaning whatsoever. Nobody understands or really even grasps what anybody's saying here. And so what ends up happening is that this guy just kind of fades away, right? He disappears. Then the sun rises. And then literally you have forget me not walking through the X-Men Citadel, right? The tower is really what it's called. He's holding this guy's dog tags. He gets to Magneto and he says, hey man, like there's something wrong with all of this, right? The people that we're fighting are not real. You have to investigate, right? Just try to remember someone should look outside the barrier and see what's out there. It might not be what you think. Now, of course, as soon as Forget Me Not walks away, Magneto forgets that he's there. And then Forget Me Not basically goes out there into the battlefield and the day starts all over again. And that was the nature of Age of X. It was just a repeating loop, right? It was the same fight happening all the time. Sometimes the X-Men would die and they would stay dead. Sometimes they would come back but the soldiers would always return. It was always the same forces that they were fighting over and over and over again. It was one of the coolest stories, especially when you got to the end and realized Legion was the one that was doing it all. Well, technically it was Legion, but not really Legion, right? It was, it was a really, really cool twist at the end of the story. But the fact remains here, right? Like, ultimately, forget me not, it's like, I'm gonna go out there and I'm gonna see what's there. Now, what it does is it seems to point to the idea that Forgive Me Not was the reason why Age of X ended in the first place. And I'll talk about why here in a second, because switching back to his conversation with this girl, right? Like she's momentarily distracted, but not enough to completely take her mind off of everything. And so again, like as a kind of way to get her mind off of getting into the, you know, the Jean Grey Institute, then basically she's like, tell me more about your story, right? Tell me more about what's going on and so what he does is he says like you'd be amazed how many x victories get put down to dumb luck after the dust settled right bad guy's secret layer pops open at exactly the right time well it must be a glitch in the system super sentinel hits the deck just when it's winning well it must have run out of fuel some unforeseen some undeserved and unforeshadowed deus ex machina rocks up right when the team needs it well fate was on their side right and he says i'm the human get out of jail free card Still, it was unbearable. It was worth it just for the knowledge I was part of something in general, right? Like part of something greater than myself. And that's where he talks about this idea of like being remembered, right? Because this girl asked the question, she says, even if it was only you, you were the only one who knew about like anything. And this guy's response is, well, it wasn't simply just me that in fact, Professor Charles Xavier figured it out. And he put a kind of mental alarm clock, right? A psychic alarm clock in his own mind once every hour, that would be a reminder to himself, did I exist? And he says once an hour, that was more than enough. Because what it meant is that he didn't have to feel alone. That even if it was just Professor Xavier acknowledging his existence, it was cool, right? Because someone out there remembered him. Now, this is gonna become even more important here in a minute when he comes across Mimic and Omega, because those guys are dope. And in fact, they make an amazing case. But then at that point, you transition to basically the aftermath of Avengers versus X-Men, when Cyclops had gained a portion of the Phoenix Force and killed Professor Xavier. And so because Professor X was gone, there was no one there to remember this guy. There was no one there to remember his existence. He was just a person in the world. And even when he was standing there next to Storm and Kitty Pride, they just walked away because they weren't looking at him. So they didn't realize he was there. And like, that was it. And so what this guy does is he kind of gets tired of this existence. And so he tracks down Mimic and Omega, right? He says, Weapon Omega can absorb the abilities and energy of any mutant out there, right? Not just copy it, but actually take your power away. The risk with this is that as he absorbs that energy, he could absorb too much and he could actually kill you, which in fact, he'd almost done to the X-Men on several occasions. Weapon Omega was one of these ridiculously just underrated mutants in Marvel Comics. For his time and with some of the stuff that guy did, his comics were dope. 
and he was more than enough for most of the X-Men out there. But basically, you have Forget Me Not who just like tracks this dude down. Now, of course, Mimic, for long-standing members of the X-Men team, you guys are aware that Mimic was literally a mutant with the ability to copy the powers of other people. He was not that dissimilar to Morph from X-Men the Animated Series, where he could copy people's forms and to a degree copy their abilities or their powers, their strengths, different things like that. In fact, you saw him do that in the, the episode where Morph came back as a one-man army and like rescued the X-Men. I think it was like, what was it, like season, season three or season four? I think that happened. But the fact remains here, right, that this guy tracks them down and they're actually working as a kind of humanitarian team, right, going out there and basically dealing with different threats and helping to bring an end to whatever crises that humans are dealing with in the aftermath of mutant conflicts. It's the best that they can really do because there's even a case that's kind of made here where Weapon Omega asks, forget me not, like you realize what it is that you're asking me to do, right, that it could actually kill you. And his response is yes, like I'm willing to take that risk. But what happens once you absorb my power? I mean, I don't want to stick you with the same curse that I've had all these years. And where Weapon Omega kind of asked the question, is it a curse? The response of Mimic, it's all in the eye of the beholder, right? From where we're standing, not being noticed sounds pretty good. And it's one of these things where it's like, I mean, sure it does, but you don't understand everything that comes with it, right? Like to you, it sounds awesome. But imagine if like everyone that you ever knew just forgot that you existed the instant they look away from you, right? Like imagine if like Mimic forgot that you existed or if Omega forgot that you existed, right? He just turns one nod to the left and then looks back and has no idea who you are or how you got there, right? And so in the midst of this whole conversation, the X-Men show up, right? Like literally Cyclops' X-Men team. This outfit that he has, by the way, with like the red X on his face and everything, yes, it's dope. We all know it's dope. It was phenomenal when it happened. The post Avengers versus X-Men landscape, as short as it was, because within like, what is it, like a year, two years, something like that, you went immediately into Secret Wars. It was pretty awesome. Cyclops during that time was pretty amazing. Honestly, in the time leading up to it, after the uh, Deadly Genesis story when Vulcan was introduced, he was pretty hardcore. But the fact remains that what you have is Cyclops, who in a lot of ways has just been trying to rally the entirety of the mutant population under his control, more or less. Because he kind of became a Magneto-type character, right? Like leading a revolution against humanity and that kind of a thing. He wasn't as extreme as like Magneto from like the 70s or the 80s, but still, right? He was following in that kind of ideology. Of course, Mimic and Weapon Omega don't want to have anything to do with it. And in fact, they're just kind of like, we're literally cleaning up the mess that you guys make more often than not. And so because of this, and because of the sheer frustration, Mimic copies the powers of every X-Man here, takes to the sky, and then immediately launches an attack against the team. And so at that point, it's kind of like, okay, either a massive conflict will ensue, which given the power of Mimic and what he's capable of, would probably kill all the X-Men here, or, Forget Me Not can do something. And so in that moment, Forget Me Not says like, we need a distraction. And so what ends up happening, of course, is that a distraction is created. And then Weapon Omega copies the powers of Forget Me Not for a brief moment. And then immediately the X-Men are just like, huh, that's weird. Okay, well, let's get back home. And like, they just leave because they don't know they're there, right? Because of the powers of Forget Me Not. And that's when they make the case to him. They're like, look, man, you literally just staved off a massive catastrophe that would have led to even more loss of life than what had already happened right now, right? So sure, like your powers, in a lot of ways, you perceive them as a curse. But the reality here is if you woke up tomorrow and your powers were gone, you're dealing with the aftermath of your powers having existed, which means he says you have no special skills, no personal or professional history, no family or friends, no ties to anyone or anything. And Mimic literally says, and it's like the, the best point that he makes here, he says, take it from me. If you thought you were alone before, wait until people can notice you and simply just don't care. And so it's just kind of like, Think it over, man. Like, be sure this is what you want. Because if you lose your abilities, you won't be able to do anything in the world, right? You'll be worse off than you are right now. And so ultimately, he's like, okay, like, give me a second. Let me think about this. The two of them turn to face each other. They forget he's there and, he, and they leave, right? Now, of course, the response to Forget Me Not is like, I can find you guys at any point in time, right? It's not a great big, huge deal. But he just kind of sits back and says like, okay, right? Like, you're right. 
It's better to do something that matters and not be noticed than the other way around. Now comes the hard part, actually doing something that matters. And so what you do is you transition over to the conversation that he's having with this girl that was trying to get into the Jean Grey Institute. And what he had done is he had switched places with her, right? So now he's stuck in the force field and this girl is like able to go, right? She's able to leave. And it's kind of like him literally looking at her and saying, hey, look, like, I will probably get out of here, hopefully, fingers crossed. He's like, the issue is that they changed the door codes, so I could very well just be stuck in this force field until I ultimately die of dehydration and starvation, right? Or I just shout as somebody walks by and say, hey, like, can you help me out or something along those lines? He's like, but the fact remains here, like, I could perish, I may not perish, but you will be alive and you can go forward and you can live your life. Because the reality of this girl's story is that she had basically said no to some guys and then she was ultimately attacked for it and disfigured. And so she had kind of run away and shown up to the Xavier Institute trying to find some kind of greater meaning for herself or some way to come to an understanding of like what her life was going to look like, right? Where she believed that she could have some kind of a normal life, right? And literally like Forgive Me Not tells this girl, he says, the way the world sees you isn't nearly as important as the way that you see it. And the things you do make it better. And he says, big or small kid, it all adds up. A legacy worth more than the person who leaves it. And he says, you're beautiful, go do something incredible. And she does, right? She's like, I'll get help, right? I'll get help, right? She turns to run, forgets he's there. Right, just totally forgets that he's there. And she's like, that's weird. Like I could have sworn there was something, right? And then like her phone's ringing and it's her mom calling and she talks to her mom and she's like literally apologizes. Like, I'm sorry, I just ran off like that, right? And she kind of comes to terms with the fact that she is not the abuse that she suffered, right? That she is her own person. She suffered a horrible thing, but it does not define her, right? And so she kind of makes peace with her mom and she continues on and that's where the story ends. So it's one of the coolest comics that you're ever going to see. But with that being said, guys, what were we talking about? I don't know, anyway, whatever we were talking about, it was probably cool. Um, I will catch you all in the next video. Peace.